How's it going friends? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Cody and today I'm going to be going over all you need to know about crosshair placement in Fortnite. Crosshair placement in Fortnite is a little different than other titles. In most games, you're usually worried about keeping your crosshair placed at opportune areas around their environment so you can line up that easy shot. But in Fortnite, the environment always changes because of, you know, the whole building and editing thing. Still, there are ways to implement crosshair placement strategies in those mechanics to make us build and edit more efficiently and ultimately play better as a result. Now, the tips and techniques we're going over are useful for whatever device you play on, but I'm eager to find out what input you actually use. So for our question of the day, are you on PS4 or Xbox controller, keyboard and mouse, or maybe even goaded on the glass? Whatever it is, share us the deets in the comment, I'm curious to know the split. And before we start, if you're trying to move up on the next level, you should check out ProGuides.com. On our site, you'll find a bunch of different courses covering a variety of topics. Like our most recent course, Building for Beginners, geared to more novice builders looking to up their game. Be sure to like the video and sub to the channel. Then follow the link in the description or visit ProGuides.com to get started. So it may not seem like it, but crosshair positioning actually plays a vital role in building. Along with character position, the spot your reticle points at dictates where your pieces will end up. Any simple movements like too high up or too low down, for instance, can potentially change the spot where your pieces end up. I know 90s are old news, but pretty much everyone knows how to do them. Still, when we coach new players trying to learn them, the number one problem they have is blocking themselves off with their floor pieces. Now let's think about why that happens. Well, a floor piece will attach to the top side of a wall when your crosshair is above the halfway point. If you're pointing below it, your floor ends up where it should be, underneath you. So, if you're always blocking yourself off during your 90s, your crosshair is pointed too high when you're placing that floor piece. To fix that issue, you can do your 90s while moving your crosshair in a sort of circular motion. Not an entire circle, but just kind of a downward motion where you go to place that floor after your walls. However, with an intuitive understanding of how the building grid works, you don't really need to implement this downward movement. To make your 90s more efficient, practice them with minimal movement and trying to keep your crosshair in that sweet spot. That way, your floor won't ever end up above the wall and you won't have to include a downward movement while you build. Even just looking at how Monkro performs the double 90s, it's clear to see how helpful crosshair placement can be. He starts it off with two walls, then jumps into a ramp. As he goes to place the rest of the builds, notice he doesn't veer his crosshair very far. He keeps it situated in the bottom corner so he can place the next set of walls. And then the corner spot's still good to follow up with the floor and ramp. So mainly, Mongrel's using his knowledge of the building grid and crosshair placement here to pull off this advanced move with minimal effort. All right, what about something more practical, like tunneling? Let's take a peek at Mongrel yet again, cause I mean, he is pretty much known for that lightning fast tunneling. Whoa, you quick, dude. Okay, all right, let's begin. Take notice of how he always keeps his crosshair very close to middle height. That way he can place the top and bottom floors in a rapid movement. He barely has to move his crosshairs to go in between the two. If you were to aim too low to the ground, he might miss the top piece and vice versa. So aiming around the mid area is critical if you want quick tunnels. Also, when he extends to the left and right to place his walls, he doesn't set his crosshair beyond where it needs to be for that wall to connect. A lot of us swing our crosshairs way farther than we need to, which essentially wastes time in our tunnels. With tons of practice, Mongrel knows the exact mouse gestures he needs to pull off to just barely attach those walls. The same thing applies when Mongrel includes edits in his tunneling. He'll keep resetting his crosshair to mid-level height so that he can quickly start his edits with the center square. And for someone like Mongrel who plays on a super low sensitivity, all these efficiencies are crucial. Any unnecessary mouse movements hurt him more than it would for most high sense players. Now guys, there are literally dozens of more examples of techniques we could go through, but we've still got editing and aiming we need to talk about. So if there's a specific move you're trying to maximize efficiency in, like maybe figuring out precise crosshair movements, there's no better way to do that than by comparing yourself to the pros. Record your own gameplay using something like Shadowplay or OBS, then look at how your favorite pro player does it. Running their footage in slow motion and pay special attention to what they're doing differently than you, I guarantee you'll find optimizations in not only crosshair placement, but also something in character positioning, building order, and edit pathing. It takes effort, but if you're going for 100% efficiency in your builds, it's something you should definitely do. May the force be with you. You got this, soldier. So we already saw a bit with Mongrel's tunnels, how preemptively placing your crosshair in the right spot can speed things up with editing, but what other considerations must we take when going for edit plays? First, you should think about minimizing crosshair movement while selecting edits. 
Part of the reason why pro players can edit pieces so quickly is that they've mastered selecting edit tiles productively. For instance, the top row, wall edit. At first glance, you might think that you need to punch out three tiles to cut this wall in half, starting at the top left, then going over the middle, and ending at the top right. But a faster method is to start at the inner edge of the left tile, go over the middle one, and then end at the inner side of the right tile. With this, your reticle is only moving a bit over one edit tile, compared to nearly three before. This type of crosshair efficiency while editing is something that the pros practice for almost all of their edits. Whether it's for a wall, a ramp, or whatever, they'll spend countless hours training so they can ingrain the patterns into their muscle memory. But quick movement isn't all you need to consider. You should also think about where your crosshair is going to end up after confirming. Generally, it's a better idea to select your edits in a way so that your crosshair ends up where it needs to be, aka ready to shoot your opponent, bro, come on. So typically, you wanna start the edit away from the enemy's position and finish so that your crosshair ends up near them. That way, during a bit of vulnerability after confirming that edit, you'll minimize the distance your crosshair needs to travel and ultimately make landing that shot a whole bit easier. Let's take the Kanata Classic as an example. With this tricky wall edit, you'll punch out everything except the two pieces in the bottom left. Now, most players, including Kanata himself, start this one on the top right, go down, up the middle column, and finish in the top left. But because your opponent is closer to the center, this requires an adjustment of your crosshair after confirming. So why would you risk editing that way and having to adjust your crosshair erratically to land the shot? Instead, we find it much more effective to start in the top left, go all the way right and down, then left and up one to finish in the middle. With this pathing, your crosshair is already closer to head height and helps with landing those right side peak shots. And if you go for a jump shot instead, the amount of adjusting you'll have to do is much less significant as well. If you're confident in your ability to correct your crosshair like Kanata is, taking the most productive edit path won't instantly improve your gameplay or anything. Still, every small bit of efficiency can help, especially for those who have a harder time controlling their crosshair. Again, that's not the only edit you can find effective pathing for. You can take advantage of the shortest crosshair routes with virtually every edit out there. Next time you practice, spend a bit of time trying to drill the most efficient crosshair movements into your mind. That way, it just becomes second nature. You don't even think about it. The last bit of crosshair placement advice relates to aiming. More specifically, how you should be positioning your crosshair to minimize potential movement and make it easier to land those shots. Now, in our past videos, we've mentioned a few of these tips, like how you shouldn't walk around aiming at the ground or at a wall during a fight, because you know there could be an enemy around the corner. And instead, you know, you should be positioning your crosshairs to where you think they'll peak, maybe near the head or neck height for the most damage possible. All of that is true. And these tips are definitely useful to follow. But I need to mention a few more instances where you can ignore the whole don't aim at walls rule and use another aiming method to land nasty shots. Ooh, nasty, bro. To do that, let's look at Clicks. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen Clicks playing wagers either on his channel or his stream. Those are kind of his thing, and he's actually gotten pretty nuts at box fight wagering. But I want to point out, we always see him use one technique with the top right triangle edit that from the looks of it, makes editing those right hand jump shots a lot more straightforward. Essentially, what Clicks does is line up his crosshair just below his opponent so that when he jumps, it moves up with him and ends up over the target. Then, all he needs to do is fire to land that shot. Occasionally, he will flick or make a minor adjustment if his aim isn't lined up perfectly, but still, it's an insanely smart way to aim, and I feel like not enough of us use it, so let's get to it, guys. And this type of lining up from behind cover doesn't only have to be with this jump shot. We've seen players use it with cones as well, ducking behind them in their own box, then uncrouching, firing, and hiding again, all with minimal crosshair movement. It's a big reason why so many players are against putting cones in their opponent's box instead of ramps, because it can be used against them. You can also line them up from behind your ramp as well. Really, any bit of cover that allows you to either jump or uncrouch and shoot. But the most important thing with doing these is that you need to practice. I'm sure Click spends a lot of time training so he knows exactly where to put his crosshair for that jump shot. Without any training, you might mistime your shot and end up hitting the wall. So don't expect to land the shots as well as Clicks does without putting in the effort yourself. All right, let's go over a quick recap of everything. Where your crosshair points largely determines where your pieces will end up, so try to use this to your advantage. Think back to how Mongrel lands that double 90 in just one jump. Crosshair positioning was instrumental there. While editing, the more you can optimize your crosshair movements, 
the faster you'll perform them. Not every edit selection piece needs to be fully dragged over. The more you practice editing this way, the quicker you'll become. Always consider where your crosshair will end up after confirming an edit. You generally want it closer to your opponent, so try to choose edit routes that leave your crosshair ready to shoot. You usually don't want to keep your crosshair pointed at a structure or the floor, but in some cases, like when going for jump shots or crouch peaks, lining up your crosshair from behind cover can reduce how much you'll have to move it, and ultimately makes landing shots much more manageable. That's it for me though guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, just a reminder to hit us up with that like and subscribe, and be sure to leave a comment telling us which input device you use. You can always support us further by using code PROGUIDES in the item shop, and you can learn more by visiting ProGuides.com. Once again, I'm your host Cody, you can follow me on Instagram at Coco Meddler. Guys, you are sick, you are awesome, you are dope, you are everything, so keep going, keep practicing, you got this, I believe in you, and so does ProGuides. Peace out my friends, see you soon.